Hi, I'm Steve Carlson, Independence Party candidate for the United States Senate, and I'm running against Al Franken. Al Franken claims in his latest TV spot, Rigged, that he led the fight against Wall Street to save your home. Cash-rich New Yorker Al Franken took to the airwaves last month and took credit for saving the homes of Minnesotans from Wall Street bad guys. He comes on the set, a Minnesota home, and says, Five years ago, a lot of Minnesotans lost their homes. One of the main reasons, Wall Street banks were actually paying the credit rating agencies to give AAA ratings to financial products that were junk. The game was rigged. So Al reformed Wall Street. Fantastic. Except it isn't true. That is just New York slick. Don't buy it. I'll show you why. Al now claims, I reached across party lines and led the fight against the scam. But Al didn't change any rating agencies, although it may actually be true that the Wall Street banks don't like him, just as he claims. In his bestseller on lies, liars, etc., at page 55, Al Franken claimed he has a, quote, hip, sophisticated New York sensibility, unquote, and asked readers to judge for themselves. Well, first, Al was born in Brooklyn, New York, and Norm Coleman was born in New York, New York. So the titanic struggle in 2008 for the United States Senate was really two slick New Yorkers battling it out to represent Minnesota, just so you know. So anyway, I did some research on Al's claim. And it's great. The man single-handedly saved Wall Street from another debacle like 2008. It's amazing, except it's not true. Don't go to alfranken.com. Go to alfranken.gov and read the fine print. Way at the bottom on his page, on credit rating agency reform, which doesn't reform any credit agencies, by the way, Al confesses. Senator Franken's proposal passed the Senate by a 64 to 35 vote. You know, Harry Reid's Senate, Saving American Homes. And the final bill passed into law was not Senator Franken's proposal, and it requires that the SEC study the problem. So, in reality, Al, you have to get a couple of Pinocchios. And I'm not tied to Wall Street or big money like the Republican candidate for the Senate. So I will give you that Pinocchio. Check your nose out. And wait, a second Pinocchio. Because Al's own .gov website, apparently there must be some law that on your .gov website you have to play it straight. So Al just directs his fan club away from that one and buries the fine print. His own website confesses that under the law actually passed after Al led his fight to save American homes if the SEC does not develop an alternative mechanism to address the conflict of interest problems then Senator Franken's proposal will go into effect. Alright Al, this is not show business. First of all, you're leading the wrong fight. You have highly overrated the credit rating agency role in leading the debacle of 2008, culminated by your election. Look, the real problem is mortgage-backed securities themselves. Now, you seem to argue that it was the credit rating agencies that caused investors to buy them, and that if the credit rating agencies had rated the securities junk, no one would have bought them and people would not have been able to buy the homes in the first place. But the real problem was the federal government. That's right, Fannie Mae, which is the Federal National Mortgage Association, has as its purpose to securitize mortgages in the form of mortgage-backed securities. Freddie Mac, which is the Federal Home Loan Mortgage Corporation, has as its purpose to expand the secondary mortgage market by packaging them as mortgage-backed securities. Al, you've heard it said that laws are like sausages. It's better not to see them being made, like the law you made. But there's something even worse. That's right, mortgage-backed securities. So you create these tranches. To make it simple, a tranche is a bunch of lousy mortgages. I'm talking about someone who didn't qualify to pay a lower interest rate. So what does the government do? They charge them a higher interest rate. That's right, they couldn't pay 8%, so we're going to charge them 25%. Makes sense when the government does it right. And then you bury that doomed mortgage with a bunch of safe mortgages. And you bundle them up and sell them to the investors in China. Because what do Chinese know about mortgages, right? 
New York slick. Well, I'll tell you what happened. And is likely to happen again. The investors got their 5% from the well-off investors on their mortgages. But, you guessed it, they did not get the 25%. But that's all right, because the bank didn't have to hold it. Exactly, the federal government backed the deal, guaranteed all the tranches. I forgot to mention that the investors were the U.S. taxpayers. So back to your credit rating agencies. I suppose they looked at this and said, well, Uncle Sam has deep pockets. We'll give them the high rating because it's government guaranteed. So I'll be interested to see the SEC study, but that's because I'm kind of wonkish on this stuff. I know that the SEC won't be able to make any alternative mechanism to fix the problem. So the excitement of Al's fight against Wall Street, that at some time in the future, either the SEC or Al will tell the Wall Street firms to stop paying the rating agencies. Uh, I don't know uh, who will pay them, but for the foreseeable future, the payments will go on. But that's not the real problem. Barack Obama just appointed Janet Yellen to replace Ben Bernanke as the head of the Fed. And that's not the real problem either. And lately there have been some discussions that any American who is genuinely paying attention to this issue will want to consider. Al, what you have identified or tried to identify is a financial bubble. And Yellen is talking about that and you should pay attention. It came out after your uh, rigged ad. Here, I'll quote one of the media you do like, CNN Money. No doubt about it, the Federal Reserve's record low interest rates over the past few years have led some investors to take on riskier investments in search of higher returns. Sound like those sausage-making tranches in the mortgage-backed securities? Yeah, it does. CNN continues, This is part of the reason why stocks keep reaching record highs. Demand for corporate bonds is rising, and volatility in the financial markets is low. Doesn't mention mortgage-backed securities yet, but what's important to note is that the volatility in the financial markets is artificially low because the Fed strategy is called QE or quantitative easing, and it is just to put so much money out there to be lent out to Wall Street firms, among others, that while riskier investments yielding higher returns can be financed with a higher probability that the firm won't bust on the deal. Yep, it's rigged. And that, although you don't know it, is really what your ad rigged is about. Not payments to credit raters who made the right call. But Congress didn't make the right call in creating this mess under such colleagues of yours as former U.S. Representative Barney Frank and Betty McCollum and Keith Ellison and, yes, Amy Klobuchar. Yellen is saying, I do not see a need for monetary policy to deviate from a primary focus on attaining prices stability and maximizing employment in order to address financial stability concerns. So that's downplaying financial stability concerns. Now that is a little shaky. She said that to the IMF in July. CNN report, she acknowledged, quote, pockets of increased risk-taking across the financial system, unquote. And she addresses Fed critics who are zeroing in on those mortgage-backed securities. And she says that limiting the rise in home prices, evidently these are not among the prices she is trying to stabilize, would be a blunt tool. She did not mention your proposal, Al. Okay, now to lay off Al's phony rig commercial, this is a real problem. At the base of it is real job growth and income growth, which we don't have. We need a homegrown American economy that is not based on funny money, like Al's commercials. Sorry, Al couldn't resist one last shot. Because, as I said in 2010 in my debate with Theresa Collette, tinkering with fiscal policy and monetary policy are not going to get our economy back on track. What we need are strong families, real education, real equal opportunity. This is for people of all races I'm talking about. This isn't just white people, white women, white men, white teenagers, not just black. All races have to be involved in equal opportunity. Real equal opportunity 
that is not rigged and getting people to work on making and selling the things we need to compete against imports. Colette said, I just don't know what fiscal or monetary policy are, but I do. The Fed came up with QE3, quantitative easing 3, and in a debate with Betty McCollum, I said we had to welcome any improvement in the economy, but that QE3 was questionable because all those loans have to be paid back. People will shoot for high-risk investments because if they just open up a ma and pa store and the rates rise, they could be sunk. And I have a big concern about Yellen's strategy. CNN, again. Finally, as long as regulators can succeed in creating a more resilient financial system, she doesn't believe regulators need to be focused on identifying so-called bubbles. That's mortgage-backed securities, bubbling tranches like sausage making. Quote, because a resilient financial system can withstand unexpected developments, identification of bubbles is less critical, she says. Well, what is this resilient system? At worst, it's the rich. Hitting them up for all the unneeded money they have lying about is the American taxpayer. It's the goose that lays the golden egg. At best, I guess, it's more funny money, pumping out more paper at the Fed. Don't get me wrong, far be it from me to not want this resilience, but we can do better. I have said I want to offer solutions, and I'll offer some now. First, let's listen to Yellen a bit more. To cite CNN, they report, Yellen thinks if the Fed had raised rates more quickly back then, unemployment would have risen rapidly and higher interest rates, quote, would have directly weakened households' ability to repay previous debts, unquote. Well, unless you had a lower rate locked in as far as mortgages go. But for credit cards, they can go up. But that's how monetary policy works. That's why I said we can't rely on monetary policy as plan A. It should be a backup and a stable environment. We don't want subprime mortgages with adjustable rates as the solution to growing jobs. So we have to wean ourselves off of the Fed's monetary policies. We could turn the economy around if we adopt this fiscal policy, that is, cutting federal departments and agencies in Washington and returning the power and resources to the 50 states. I hope Al would support that. But any other tinkering with taxes will be irrelevant compared to the fantastically bloated national debt and federal deficit. And that goes on to future generations, as many in the Tea Party have voiced real genuine concern about, and people need to listen. Now for Plan A. Plan A should be teaching people to build families, to build homes. These are family values. They are religious values, and they are the truth. We want government to support it. Family values means a man and a wife commit, have children, and raise them right. And all of them live right and save money and pass it on to America's future generations through their family estates. Plan A should be teaching people industry, creation of truly valuable enterprises that build people up, build America up. Exports are fine, they are good, but they are not the way to grow the economy. We've been there before, because with exports come imports, and we lose out to foreign companies like China. I'm not saying block imports, I'm saying concentrate on creating goods right here that we can successfully market to our huge American market. Are we doing that? No, we're not, even with the low interest rates. And that is because Al Franken pushed Obamacare, the disastrous and dangerous Obamacare, over the top because he's a Democrat. That's right. And that's the Democrat plan, to offer people the illusion of improved health care while killing their jobs and families. But they don't hate America. As Ronald Reagan said, it isn't that our Democrat friends don't know anything, it's just that so much of what they know isn't true. And so much of what Al Franken says is great, but it's not true. And actually, even if the payments to rating agencies stopped and they became a nonprofit charity, it wouldn't stop the problems we face. So, Al, this is serious stuff. It's not about funny money. And what's rigged is the election and Mark Ritchie's practices of taking home all the voter email addresses he wants to use for DFL fundraising while denying registered voters email addresses to other candidates like me. 
so we can communicate with the voters during the elections. He doesn't want us to cut into the profits of the media industry of selling email addresses, driving up the cost of elections. What's rigged is the gender and race and sexual preference quotas in endorsing and voting for party platforms, quotas created by the DFL Constitution and backed by the force of state law. Let's have serious elections with a radical middle that doesn't just label all right-wingers as liars and big, fat, stupid idiots like you called Rush Limbaugh in your book. I'm willing to put all that aside and debate you on the issues of how to save housing, how to save the U.S. economy, and how to get back to generating jobs like back in the time. How about you? You name the time and place, and I'll be there. I'm Steve Carlson, and I approve this message.